Hi, listeners. It's E.J. Miller. I'm the writer and creator here at Fast Food Horror. Before we go any further, I want to thank you for again joining us for another installment in our anthology. Now that spooky season is quickly upon us, we'd like to, over the next few weeks, take different aspects of our favorite holiday and explain why they are. But we'll be doing that in a fast food horror kind of way, in a creepy kind of way. We hope you enjoy it. Now, if I could find Igor, we can actually... Igor! Igor! Where is that sack of bones? We can't start the show without him. He's He's got to do the intro. Without Igor, there is no show. Where could he be? He's probably down in the dungeon. Oh, that sack of bones. Igor! Igor, what are you... Igor, what are you doing? Igor, I, I, we have to start the show. The listeners are waiting. I'm sorry, EJ. I had my scare pods in. I barely heard you even come in. Your scare pods? What? What? Okay, I'll give. What are you even listening to? I'm binge listening my new favorite podcast. It's Two Crows. It's these delightful women that talk about paranormal, scary things that have happened through history. And it's so devastatingly creepy and chock full of information. I just can't get enough. There are so many episodes. Well, I, I'm glad you found something to listen to. I found, I'm, I'm glad you found something educational and something you seemed so excited by. But we have to do our show. And we can't do our show without you. So, if you could, please hit pause on whatever episode you're listening to of Two Crows, and at least do the intro and hit the button with the music so our listeners can hear our show. And then both of us can get some lunch, put our chairs back in the cemetery, watch the werewolves play in the moors, and listen to Two Crows together. It's everywhere and anywhere podcasts are found, right? Ooh, is it on YouTube? Oh, yes, EJ, it is. It's on YouTube, it's on Apple, it's on Spotify, it's everywhere. It's wonderful. But let me, let me start the show, and then we can entertain our guests. I'll just hit this button. Welcome, listeners, to our latest episode entitled The Tale of the Jack-O-Lantern. We hope you find it insightful, yet creepy. Welcome, weary traveler. Come join me by the fire and warm up a bit, and I'll tell you a tale of the jack-o'-lantern. Yes, the pumpkin we carve up with the face. There is a story behind it, a story that goes back many, many a generation. The Irish tale of a man named Jack. Stingy Jack, to be exact. Oh, he's known by other names, too. Jack the Smith, Jack the Drunk, Drunk Jack, Flaky Jack. He was a miserly old man, a drunkard, who ran about town telling lies, telling tales, deceiving, manipulating, and tricking people. And not the ha-ha kind of tricks either. Many of the tricks he did were mean-spirited, and many of the tricks and lies he told were to cheat those out of money, or just to be plain hurtful. Now Jack's forked tongue lies and antics 
got the attention of those in heaven and hell. Mostly, those in hell. Specifically, the devil himself. He was unconvinced and envious of Jack's ways. So the devil went to find out for himself whether or not Jack lived up to his vile reputation. So on one cold autumn's eve, close to the witching hour, Jack found himself walking in the wood and came upon the devil. Now there are two stories about this encounter with Old Scratch, both very similar and both having the same outcome. I will tell you the most common tale the weary travelers of the Emerald Isle have passed on to me. Jack feared the devil had come to finally collect his soul, but Jack, being Jack, asked for one request before going off to hell, that he might have one more drink of ale before going. The devil acquiesced to the simple request, and they made their way to a local tavern. Jack, being the drunkard he was, down many a pint. When his throat was finally quenched, he asked the devil to pay his tab, which shocked the devil, because he did not carry any money. Jack convinced him to turn himself into a silver coin with which to pay the bartender, and then changed back when the bartender wasn't looking. The devil did so, impressed by Jack's tactics. Jack, quick as a whip, stuck the now transmogrified devil coin into his pocket, which also contained a crucifix. The crucifix's presence kept the devil from escaping his form. Jack then did a bargain with the devil. In exchange for his freedom, he agreed not to collect Jack's soul. Now eventually the drinking took its toll on Jack, and he did die. Stingy Jack prepared to enter heaven through the gates of St. Peter, but he was stopped. Jack was told by God that because of his sinful lifestyle and deceitfulness and drinking, he was not allowed into heaven. Jack then went down to the gates of hell and begged for admission into the underworld. The devil, fulfilling his obligation and promise to Jack, could not take his